Melissa set to rapidly intensify into a major hurricane before bringing catastrophic impacts to Jamaica and other Caribbean islands. All the details in today's video. Welcome in, folks. Happy Saturday, October 25th, and uh, continuing to track what is about to become, if not already, Hurricane Melissa whenever you're watching this, and eventually likely to become Major Hurricane Melissa before unfortunately directly striking Jamaica by the early part of this week. And this storm is just crawling, folks. It's not moving very quickly, uh, but uh, is unfortunately because of that going to bring very long lasting and uh, really just huge impacts, honestly, for a lot of folks down into the Caribbean. Other than that, I'm also tracking a big pattern change into the east, maybe the first snow for some of us by early November. Before we get to all that, though, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. You can catch me on air tonight, actually, as well as tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, and if you don't live locally, you can always download the free WCCB Charlotte app. Uh, to tune in. Uh, I will ask though, if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. That helps keep you in the loop here and up to date uh, with all of the changing data and my analysis of that data. All right, folks, let's dive right on into things and start talking about uh, this forecast. Looping next to me is the latest run of our afternoon Canadian model and uh, showing Melissa strengthening down into the Caribbean, pulling north, and then notice a big storm into the east kind of scoops up Melissa uh, and brings all sorts of impacts on its own. So it's very busy seven or 10 days ahead for a lot of us here in the weather department, and not just with Melissa, but also with what's beginning to happen back home. Here she is right now, starting to really get that look, uh, really a borderline hurricane already, could potentially already be there, like I said, by the time you're watching this. Uh, so right around 70 to 80 mile an hour winds, currently pressure dropping down into the 980s, and has that very classic shrimp look to it. You can see that head here, and then kind of here's the tail, if you will, of the shrimp of Melissa. And uh, as I'm recording this right around 1.30 or so this afternoon, you can see another big blow up of convection right around the center. So the storm now finally stacked, meaning that low level center and that mid and upper level center are on top of each other and that's helping to really allow this convection to straighten the storm out and the more we get these big blow-ups of thunderstorms near the center the more latent heat release there is the more of that there is the more it lowers the surface pressure and that feedback just continues until something stops the storm and unfortunately there's really nothing in sight to stop it from rapidly intensifying over the coming days because of that, the um, National Hurricane Center does have uh, the cone now showing major hurricane status becoming likely. Uh, as I mentioned, currently uh, upper threshold tropical storm, borderline hurricane, now slowly jogging off to the west here, uh, and it's going to start to move to the south of Jamaica. Unfortunately, as it does that, uh, obviously, uh, all of this northern rain and uh, thunderstorm activity is going to work right into the island right now, a lot of that currently into southern Haiti uh, and even into a southern Dominican Republic, but as the storm slowly uh, works west, we'll continue to strengthen. You can see the latest forecast right around landfall uh, is for a major uh, hurricane right around 150 to 155 miles an hour. That's basically a borderline category five is the official forecast and then could uh, likely come ashore somewhere right into the island. And then after that, working up into south uh, eastern Cuba and into the southeastern Bahamas, not far from the Turks and Caicos, and uh, eventually will continue to pull up and north and out into the open Atlantic uh, here by the time we get later into this week. All right, let's a quick overview of things. Let's go ahead and just dive right into model data today. We already know a good bit about the storm and where it's going, so let's just really get into the impacts, and then we'll talk about those big changes coming to the eastern U.S. here to round out the month. We'll start with a global model. I'll show you the European, and then we'll look at a hurricane model so you can see more in depth what the storm's going to look like. Uh, here it goes, continuing like we've kind of forecasted now for a couple of days, working just south of the island of Jamaica, uh, really for the rest of today into your Sunday, continuing to strengthen as it just crawls along the southern shoreline. And then likely uh, around Monday night into Tuesday, the storm really starts to pull north. Things really go downhill into the island, crosses over Jamaica, back into the Caribbean, just south of Cuba here by uh, Tuesday afternoon. Uh, continues on that trajectory, hits southeastern Cuba, then gets into the southern Bahamas, still as a hurricane, and continues pulling north from there uh, towards Bermuda later on uh, by this week. 
So, I mean, I mean, it's really the same forecast we've been talking about the past couple of days, folks. It has not changed. The models have finally locked in, uh, so no need to really go super in-depth on that. But let's take a look at a hurricane model. These often do much better with intensity, uh, so let's get an idea of how strong this thing could be. I think this model doing pretty good. This is the half-same model. kind of uh, has forecasted pretty well the, what the storm would look like, so it, its verification is good enough. I feel uh, obligated to use it today. How about that? We'll keep it going, and you can see continuing to strengthen. This is overnight tonight, right around 2 a.m. Eastern. Eastern uh, United States time, so New York City time. Uh, we've got 977 millibars on this storm is what the model is forecasting. And notice how it, it continues to drop, continues to strengthen, gets a very compact core. And by the time we're getting up tomorrow uh, during the late morning, we've got uh, a major hurricane or at least a borderline major hurricane. So that's why rapid intensification is something that's in the forecast. We're only at uh, you know borderline category one right now. We could be at a category three by this time tomorrow. Would not surprise me at all. And you can see that outer bands beginning to lash the island. This is Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow, major hurricane just south of the island, but the outer rain bands, maybe even the outer eye wall, uh, beginning to scrape uh, across the country of Jamaica and just continues an onslaught of heavy torrential downpours throughout Sunday into Monday. The storm continues to strengthen into a Category 4 monster uh, here by overnight Monday and starts to pull north and makes landfall on this model uh, very early in the morning hours of Tuesday as a, a major hurricane, very heavy rainfall, very strong winds, storm surge, basically every threat you could think of with a hurricane we would get with a scenario like this uh, that uh, our hurricane model is projecting. This is, like I said, early Tuesday morning, overnight Monday, then crosses the island, starts to pick up forward, uh, forward speed, which is a good thing. And by the time we get to Tuesday afternoon, the worst of it is over for Jamaica, still heavy rain as the backside of the storm works through. Uh, but then next up is southeastern Cuba by by the evening of Tuesday into Wednesday, slams the southeastern portion of that nation uh, still as a hurricane, maybe even a major hurricane, weaker than it was when making landfall in Jamaica, but still quite strong, uh, and then works up into the Bahamas still as potentially a Category 2 or 3 storm, uh, maybe weakening down to a 1 at that point. Either way, likely still a, a powerful hurricane, and then uh, works up back into the open Atlantic, and the land should be done with, uh, dealing with this thing by uh, overnight Wednesday into Thursday, uh, at least uh, down to towards the Caribbean. That's what the hurricane models are showing. What exactly does this mean in terms of impacts? Well, let's take a look at those rainfall totals, potential wind gusts, and then what the storm's going to do once it's done with the Caribbean. Here's a rainfall forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and you can see, uh, obviously, uh, problematic for sure. We've got areas that could get 20 to 30 inches of rain. Folks, that's 500 to 700 or so millimeters that's enough to cause catastrophic flooding in some places. And this is still rainfall uh, to come. And you can see this is for the next four days, the extreme southeastern tip of Haiti in the bullseye uh, into portions of uh, actually eastern Jamaica in the bullseye, partially because when the storm is moving at the slowest, it's going to be near you folks in the eastern half of the country. And that's why those areas are expecting the worst. So I, I think when all is said and done, as bad as the wind is going to be with this storm, uh, the rainfall and the flooding from it is going to be the one that really takes the cake of the headlines. I'm sure uh, whenever the storm is done, it's going to, like I said, bring potentially catastrophic flash flooding. Landslides as well is going to be a big thing. Obviously, we do have some pretty mountainous terrain in some of these regions. So uh, I, I do think that that will be a very big concern here with Melissa as it continues to churn away and bringing all this rain. And then even up into southeastern Cuba, uh, less rain because the storm will be moving quicker, but enough to definitely cause flooding, potentially upwards of a foot of rainfall uh, or somewhere in that 300-ish millimeters uh, of rain uh, ballpark could see totals up in that range. Flooding will be less of a big deal into the Bahamas as uh, the storm will definitely be working a good bit quicker by that point. Uh, so it would be more of a storm surge and wind threat for you folks. Speaking of wind, here's the wind forecast, or at least the chance of seeing damaging winds. This is the chance of tropical storm force winds, and uh, it's all but a guarantee for basically the entire island of Jamaica outside of the areas that are protected by terrain. Obviously, if you're in a bit of a valley and you have mountains on all sides of you, uh, that can kind of help uh, shield you a little bit. Uh, but uh, if you're right on the front of the beach, yeah, I mean, a tropical storm force wind is going to be a guarantee here. Even could see some of them uh, into, again, extreme southwestern Haiti there, and then up into Cuba and the behind. Bahamas, the southern and central Bahamas, that is, uh, going to have uh, a pretty good chance above 50% of seeing those tropical storm force winds. 
Hurricane winds, remember the way hurricanes work, the entire hurricane isn't bringing the hurricane force winds. It's a small little circle where the eyewall is uh, that uh, really brings the punch in terms of the strongest winds. Uh, so wherever the storm makes landfall in Jamaica, we'll see uh, those hurricane winds, almost a guarantee. It's just a matter of, is it right in the center of the island? Is it on the western side of the island or maybe the eastern side? And then I do think we'll at least get some hurricane winds on the southern shoreline of Cuba uh, once the storm works through in the Bahamas as well. But remember, it's going to depend where the exact center goes. So not everyone will see the strongest winds, but those of you that do absolutely will feel it in a big time way. All right, that's Melissa down into the Caribbean. It's really the same forecast as yesterday, folks. So this thing is really locked in in terms of what the thought process is. Let's go ahead and talk about what's after the Caribbean, where the storm's going to go, how the upper level steering currents change, and what that means for the United States and Canada. There's good news for the United States and Canada out of this. I think the model's finally coming together. This one will not hook back inland. However, we are going to see other coastal storms that I do think will bring impacts here through the end of the month and through the start of November. Let me show you why. We've got this big upper level pattern that's beginning to evolve. We've got a bit of a trough starting to work down into the southeast over the coming days. We're going to see some rain. In fact, we already are for the southern plains. That's going to help pick up Melissa finally. She's going to get pulled north in the flow. And that's why it's going to pick up forward speed once it's done with Jamaica and then crossing Cuba and the Bahamas much quicker. After that, though, uh, the troughing goes from, uh, you know, trough to big time troughing, I guess is the best way I can think of to word that right now. Uh, but uh, you, you can see it there, a big blob of the pinkish, purplish colors there into the southeastern United States. That's a big pocket of cold air working in. And uh, I think it's going to help to steer Melissa further out to sea. Now, uh, if the tilt of this were right and if it interacted perfectly, it could have pulled it up inland. Some of the models get close to doing that. But I think instead what's going to happen is we're just going to get our own coastal storm that's going to ride up the coast and Melissa will get carried out. And now it could make a closer pass to Canada maybe, uh, but uh, either way, it doesn't look to be a big direct hit uh, or anything like that. Let me show you what it looks like here on the ensembles. These are the latest European ensembles, and uh, as we've discussed, it blocked in pretty well that this is likely to go right over or right next to the island of Jamaica. Still a smaller in chance it misses a direct landfall, but really most of the models bring it right into the country. Probably about an 80% chance of a direct hit at this point, maybe at only 20 or so that it barely misses to one side, but that would still bring a uh, heavy catastrophic rainfall. Uh, it just would help with the wind threat a little bit if it didn't make a direct hit. After that, yeah, we're starting to get in pretty good agreements. This is actually going to move pretty close to Bermuda. So if you're in Bermuda watching this one, uh, obviously the odds of it going right over the island are pretty small given just uh, your geography and how small uh, of a uh, landmass the island country there is. Uh, but um, nonetheless, going to move in that direction. Really no members bring this up into the United States or Canada anymore on the European suite and the AI suite of models showing the same thing right into Jamaica, right into, excuse me, southeastern Cuba into the Bahamas after that, and uh, then closer to Bermuda than uh, mainland North America. All right, that's the tropics update. Let's talk about this big pattern change back home. Like I said, I'm tracking a big cool down with the potential for some coastal storms and maybe even snow for some of us. Well, you can see on satellite, we've already got a storm system over the United States. It's swirling away right over Texas and uh, Oklahoma currently. Uh, so pretty well defined here. But you also notice back into the PNW, another big spin uh, starting to work on in. And uh, that's going to be the one that really brings a chance for a very stormy, cold, wet into the month of October into the eastern United States. Uh, but uh, definitely getting into a much more active uh, long wave pattern here and short wave pattern compared to uh, the very zonal flow that we've seen over the past, uh, we'll say a couple of uh, weeks. How about that? Where we haven't had a whole lot going on. Now we've had moments, but nothing too crazy. In terms of radar, I mean, it's uh, it's raining where the storm is. I'll tell you that much. We've got pretty good rain into Arkansas, down towards Louisiana, uh, into Texas right now, Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, we have had some severe weather the past couple of days. Oklahoma City, Dallas have both seen some stronger storms. So this one, you know, it's doing the thing for sure. It's adding some active weather to the pattern and then back up into the Pacific Northwest. You can also see some of that rain starting to work on in. So that's the current pattern out there. A bit of a gloomy day for many of us. Showing you how it's going to evolve here into the mid-levels with our vorticity map. You can see here's that current storm system continuing to work off to the east. Going to bring a pretty wet uh, start to the week, potentially for the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida. And then comes that much bigger dip in the jet stream. And this is the one uh, by the middle and end of this coming week we need to watch. We've got a lot of upper-level spin. We've got a lot of upper-level difluence here on the right 
right hand side of the system, right along a very big uh, zone of bear clinic instability along the coast. It's a pretty classic setup for a big coastal storm. Now, the exact track of that, the exact intensity of that, that's what we still need to find out. But if we take a look at some of our models, you'll see they show it quite well. Here's the latest European model, and you can see it's got uh, that area of active weather over the couple of uh, coming days. Continues to work east. This is by Sunday afternoon. You can see pretty wet into areas like Memphis, down through Mississippi, uh, Alabama, uh, even into New Orleans, uh, looking pretty active. And then by Monday, it works into the Carolinas and Georgia, Atlanta, Greenville, Spartanburg, Columbia, uh, back down towards the coast, places like Charleston. Uh, Myrtle Beach looked pretty wet as well here for your Monday afternoon and then could even get up into the Charlotte area and into the rest of North Carolina through Tuesday. So a pretty gloomy start to the week. Then comes that next big trough and looks what ha uh, look what happens. It dives down. Uh, we've got uh, this big uh, influx of cold air, some of the coldest air we've seen so far this season. This is next Wednesday, right before Halloween, uh, starts to get its own storm going, then tries to enhance our leftover coastal storm from earlier in the week and both of them kind of work together together almost in a Miller B type wave phase together up the coast and you get a big coastal storm that uh, works inland brings very heavy rain for some of us into the northeast a gusty winds and even yeah I see a little bit of pink in there maybe some higher elevation snowfall cannot rule it out either way though a big shot of cold air right behind it to start in November Here's a GFS model and what it shows, kind of a similar setup. There's that coastal storm Monday and Tuesday getting going. Here comes the next upper level system, takes advantage of that environment, and pretty dead on with the European, a big storm system right into the mid-Atlantic and northeast by the middle and end of this coming week. This is Thursday, Friday, that general time frame. Very heavy rainfall, atmospheric river getting uh, just funneled into the northeast. Heavy mountain snow into the Virginias. Yeah, potentially. Don't completely roll it out. Uh, and then uh, continues to work up into the Northeast and uh, keeps that active thought process going. Now, you saw that and probably the first thing you thought about was the snow, right? For uh, some of my friends up there in the Northeast. Well, let's hold our horses a little bit. This is what the ensemble say. What is the chance of seeing at least an inch of snow over a 24-hour period? And yeah, we do get a bump. This would be right around Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but the highest numbers we're seeing are about 40% or so. And that'd be for the highest elevations of West Virginia and uh, maybe even up into the Poconos, the North Carolina mountains, and only about a 10 to 20 percent chance we see uh, accumulating snowfall in, into the highest peaks there uh, by the middle of this week. So it, it's not a lot, but for October standards, it's worth mentioning there on the European ensembles. What about the GFS ensembles? What does it show? Uh, well, a, a similar story, but even less excited. As big as the snow was on the uh, GFS operational run, its ensembles only have a peak chance of uh, you know seeing accumulating snow of around 10 to 20 percent into the highest peaks of West Virginia. So not to say it won't snow, but uh, we'll hold our horses a little bit for now until we uh, get uh, maybe a little bit closer to see exactly how cold that air is going to be. But either way, to see snow showing up on the operational mo uh, models, uh, a good sign that seasons are changing and we're starting to get to the snowier time of year. Speaking of seasons changing, uh, let's talk about that cold shot uh, right behind this system and how it could last for quite some time into November. Here's the temperature anomaly forecast from uh, the European model. Already quite chilly into the east. We've had a shot of cooler air. It hangs around, stays chilly, and then once we get that storm system by this week, notice how cold it gets, folks. I mean, we get a big shot of uh, cooler air into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the Carolinas, the Mid-South, the Deep South, even into Florida. Yeah, it's quite a festive Halloween treat, and it just keeps coming all the way through the loop. We just keep getting these shots of colder air showing up uh, on some of our computer models guidance. Now, you know, it's not just the models, I guess is the best way to word this. The Climate Prediction Center, excuse me, also showing uh, this potential. You can see they've got higher in chances of below average temperatures in the six to 10 day range. That would be from basically Halloween through the first week of November, uh, you know, much higher chances of below average temperatures than above average temperatures uh, here in areas shaded into blue. In terms of rainfall, also higher in rainfall chances up in the northeast. So we've got plenty of cold air. We've got some moisture. Uh, and that's generally this time of year a pretty good sign that we're going to get a lot of this coastal storm activity. So while hurricane season will wind down after Melissa, that uh, doesn't mean active weather will be disappearing as we continue to track uh, this uh, potential pattern here into the eastern U.S. And I'm much uh, more excited to talk about that than Melissa. I think we're all done with the uh, devastation of hurricanes. 
Most of us got pretty lucky this season. Obviously, it's not over with Melissa turning away, but I really think November, uh, we can really kind of close things off and hopefully be done talking about the tropics. All right, folks, that's all I've got for you on this Saturday. Again, you can catch me at 10 p.m. tonight on WCCB Charlotte. Uh, but uh, until then, have a great evening. I'll see you all next time.